T-Mobile is no stranger to pushing the boundaries of wireless. And now, we're pushing those boundaries over the border of Mexico and Canada. That's right. T-Mobile is extending coverage and calling to any phone, including mobile, to and from the U.S., Mexico, and Canada at no extra charge. That's coverage in three countries for the price of one. Your 4G LTE data and unlimited talk and text work seamlessly in Mexico and Canada, just like in the U.S. So you can call and text family and friends as much as you want and use your data just like you do at home. Borders are for countries, not coverage. So don't wait. Switch to the Uncarrier today. Check out T-Mobile.com slash three countries. Limited time offer subject to change. Device, network, and coverage impact experience and speeds, which vary. For U.S. residents with primary use on T-Mobile's U.S. network, not for extended international use. Good morning, good evening, and good Love afternoon, wherever radio. you are. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, to wherever you are in this ever-expanding now moment. Welcome to the Blu-ray Ascension Star Seed Show with your host, Shemenka Natalie Alea. Hello, everybody. Myself, Bridget Rao. And today we're going to be talking about the Muneki Rites, um, a shamanic tradition that's been passed down for thousands of years. And Natalie Alea and myself both um, are sharing this tradition with as many people as possible in hopes of raising the vibration and helping others to mm-hmm. reach ascension. And would you like to start? You're the one that brought me to the Muneki, right? So I think. Yeah, are... yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think it was like in, um, I was going to say 2006 or 2007, that I, I had read, you know, Alberto Cabalado's books, Shaman Healer Sage, all those books. And the Munaki were was big over here in Ireland at that time. Um, and they were having a lot of like, you know, the weekends but it was very expensive. <laughs> it was extremely expensive. So I, I couldn't do it, but I was just fascinated by it and um always wanted to go to Peru, had this, you know, thing about Peru and um, I went, finally, I, uh, someone was doing a weekend, kind of like what me and you are doing now, where it's like a reasonable price, you, you know, you get the, the rights, and um, and then I went to Peru, and I spent a month in Peru, and spent some time with the Queer of learning their stuff, and honestly, what I really like about the Monarchy, it's like, the, it, it's like a, they're the tools. But it really is self-driven, and it's about you and your relationship with spirit and your relationship with the earth keepers or, you know, whoever you're connecting with or the archetype. So it's very self-driven, and this is just like a tool belt that um, we right. use, you know, through the monarchy. Natalie, um, mm-hmm. you, you're, I can hear you, but I can't hear you very well. Is your volume down a little? No, it, 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 it's not. Uh, but I see things. Uh, sorry, guys, whoever's listening. Uh, this is our first time on here, so uh, you can't hear me very well. Uh, so I'll have to talk up. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's 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 kind of quiet, but it's also kind of like blah, 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 you know, like more mumble. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take a cushion away. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will take the cushion away. Hold on. <laughs> It was saying it was going to help. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, that's, that's a little better now. Okay, okay. So yeah, so um, I think with the with the monarchy anyway, that um, a lot of people think, well, how do I heal? You have that question too. How do I use it for healing? It it, it doesn't really work that way. They are initiations. They will heal you, but. You know, you pass on the money key, but that you, it does inform your own healing and your own work because you're connected with, you know, all the archetypes now. You're doing all this other stuff, and that's going to impact your work, and you'll just know what to do. It's like it just gives you the knowledge. Right. Yeah, and, and when I first started the money key, um, I had, like, no clue. I mean... The first time you had sent me a message, you're like, oh, you know, blah, 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 you do the apus and this and that and this and this and I'm like, huh? <laughs> so I did a lot of, like, research um, 
separately because, you know, and I, in the classes that I teach now, like, well, you know, there's so much information that we kind of just take it one step at a time. And I try to remember the things that I had to look up to tell them now. So like, you know, even like where Kocha or, um, uh, Quero or Apu's or anything like that. It's just like, it's like some people language. don't know. Yeah. It's like learning a new language. So, to us, it, like to me now, it's like second nature. I know what they mean, and I just say them. But when I am teaching the class, you know, people kind of give you a look like, "What's that?" So, but by the end, <laughs> by the end of all the rites, it was like boom, just all this information was there for each rite, and like, yes. and it just keeps evolving and keeps evolving. Well, you told me an interesting story, and it's so much. It's such a Munaki story because they say. Um, that, you know, we do have this information stored in us, and the monarchy is just really awakening it. And you, you had a story about the winter culture, or was it the opening prayer? I forget. You, you had a story, oh, and it was exactly oh. what was in the written material, and you were like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I knew it already. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when I, cause when I first started teaching the Muniki, I printed, I went and I found like, you know, like I Googled, um, opening sacred space cause I wanted to print out stuff mm-hmm. for people to have so that, you know, they knew the aspects of open and sacred space, like addressing the, um, the directions and things like that. Right. So I picked out a prayer and I was like, oh, this is perfect because it calls, to the cells and it calls the serpent in and it and it really connects with some of the archetypes from the Muneki. So I was like, mm. oh, this is perfect and it will help them to start remembering the archetypes. And I printed it out and I give it to everybody on the first day and then I have a friend who received Muneki rights in Peru and he wow. went through like four wins with, you know, you know the, the big money one and it's mm. like Alberto Veloto's like manual and he showed me the manual, and on the first two pages is the information about opening sacred space. And I had printed out stuff about where coaches too. So they talk about that, and the prayer that they gave in the manual is the exact same one that I printed out. And I was like, woohoo! Yeah. This is just like, you know, <laughs> confirmation, like, hey, yeah, yeah, you're on the right path. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I like about the monarchy is it's not just about the path. It's also about connecting with our future selves and the future exactly. generations and bringing knowledge from them back. And I think that's where star seeds really can connect because we already connect off world, if you want to say, you know, because we, we understand or connect with our, our, our soul, like that we come from different places. And um, the thing about connecting with the future generations, I mean, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the different cultures obviously have a lot of ancestor worship and, you know, we wouldn't be here without them. But to really connect with the, these future generations, it, it's pretty cool. And you get loads of new information then, you know, stuff that it hasn't come in yet. Yeah, yeah, and I like the fact that, like, we're able to um, heal the past but also reach forward into the future and pull back, you know, stepping into different timelines, like how they kind of... Mm-hmm. It, it's just cool, yep. and, it, and it's funny because as you go through the Monique, I mean, this some of the stuff sounds far-fetched, like, yeah, okay, we're going to be healing our DNA and we're going to be... Um, <laughs> you know, like, you know, stepping out of linear time, but when you start really doing the work, and you start giving the rights to other people, I've noticed it amplifies. Like, I started, um, when I'm doing meditations, I feel like my body leaves this spot that I'm sitting in. Like, first time I felt like I was, like, a 1,000 feet up in the air. The next time it felt like the two girls that were there, I had my eyes closed. It felt like they went shooting, like, miles away from me. So I started talking louder for the meditation. And when I opened my <laughs> eyes, they were right there. Yeah, and it, it 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 does it in your physical life too. Like just everyday stuff, you walk into a room and you like think everything in there is like falling over or something. You run over to pick up a chair that's not even moving, and <laughs> you know. And I, even my mom, my mom's going through the Muneki rites, and she's she being is. able to beautiful. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's able to see better, and she's hearing more. And, you know, it's just, it's cool to see how it affects everybody on a different level. And um, 
the people who actually stick with it and like do the meditations and really work on it, they open up so fast and quick. Like my friend Joan, she she just um, finished the last right yesterday, but she's been there every week from the first one to now, and she's doing so wow. awesome. And my friend Jen too, she she did them quick. She was like me. She's like, give me another one, give me another one, give me another one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, some people and that's that fine. Time. And I think some people need mm-hmm. time in between. And like you know, I notice like some people will do the foundation rites and then they're gone, and then they'll come back you know months later. I did the first two rites with a group of people, and now they're just coming back on their own in separate ways to to continue on with the with the tradition. But yeah. um, it just depends on well, where you, you are in your life. Uh, it is. It, it, it has to fit you. And you know how they say the teacher will come or, or the, the the teaching will come when you need it or, you know, when you are ready. And right. When so you are ready, the teacher like appears. The, and the ride can be quite intensive. And so people, some people take a little bit longer to integrate them. Yeah. Because any kind of teaching, it is an initiation. Uh, you know, originally, like among the Coero, now they call themselves pacos, not shamans. But the pacos would, you know, be learning for years. And there's actually many rites among the cuero. It's just that Valaldo worked with one paco, and he created this framework. And he was like, okay, what are the? Let's say he came up with the nine rites that you know you would think would encompass in general. But each tribe and different people. In the Cuero, have like there's like really hundreds of rights if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. In in the you manual know, that I have, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. The I found um, I actually found it on on the computer somewhere and I printed it out and it tells us everywhere that he, um, the rights are from that he has. So you know, like mm-hmm. they explain to you, um, the Sears right was practiced in the North Coast peoples of Peru. Um, mm-hmm. in the Sears and Trackers of the Amazon. The Harmony Rite was from the lowland Quero of uh, the Huachaparari people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then the Bands of Power okay. were transmitted by Juan Victor Nunez del Prado, whose father was the discoverers of Quero Nation. The Healer's Rite is the Hampi Blessing, and it comes from the Highland Quero. The Daykeeper's Rite is known among the Andean Pacos and the Pampapa Seo referring to the lowlands and valleys of the Pampa Mm -hmm. into the Mesa or Altar. Wisdom Keeper is among the Andean Pacos and the Altamoseoc Rite, referring to the high mountains of the Andes. Uh, Earth Keeper Rite is known among the Andean Pacos in the Kurokakiric Rite, referring to the elder who masticates the wisdom to nurture the young young ones who follow. And then the Star Keeper Rite is known as Mosic Carpe, which means the new rite in the Quechua language. This rite announces and prepares one for the time to come. And the creator rites are known as the Tatanachi's rite. The word Tatanachi mm-hmm. literally translate that in there so people could understand, like, it's not just, you know, like, they weren't one place just sitting there doing all no, the rites. No, he like, put them together. He actually did a lot of work. He he worked with one, he gathered them together and used them as a framework, and I think he had a mission, uh, uh, you know, to get them out to people. But they're actually, like, each tribe, there's other ones, too, that they have, like, those, you know, specialties. <laughs> they have, you know, their own little specialties, too. Um, yeah. I was a teacher right in a hot spring up in Pizak. I don't even know what ride I, I, I received. <laughs> and this was after I received <laughs> the nine Munaki rites, but there was a Paco there, and I, I was swimming, and I was with a couple of different other women. And he's like, oh, would you like, you know, do you know the Munaki? We're like, yeah, we receive him. Well, I'll give you a right or whatever from his tribe. And he just laid laid his hands on our head or whatever and passed it on. And it was like, okay, cool. This is thanks. Yeah. <laughs> My friend was telling me about there's, like, these real feminine ones that they have, and there's, like, you know, it's similar to the Munaki, but it's, it's more of a feminine one, and they you go mm-hmm. there, and it's like a couple of weeks process. I ha- I can't remember the name of it. I'll get the name of it for the next time we talk, but I really oh, want yeah. to do it. Because it um, sounds really and cool. Before, too, it, it was that it took him years to do this. And Valaldo and I guess the, the Paco that you worked with both were like, yeah, the time, you know, we can, it can, the earth cannot wait years. 
now. <laughs> humanity. Right. Well, the earth could, but humanity can't. Right. And I, I tell people, because I think some people get caught up in the fact, like, when um, when you tell, you know, there's there's a part where it's like, you know, they, they were doing this in for preparation of 2012. Instead of having spirit to, to human transitions, it started becoming, you know, person to person. They, they started spreading this out there, getting it out among the people. And mm-hmm. it was before 2012. But the thing is... 2012 happened, but we're still shifting and we're still we're still tr- striving to reach, you know, that state. I mean, it's all about be, uh, bringing in harmony and um, love and like perfect. becoming a steward for mm-hmm. all of creation. You don't, and that's not something that like 2012 is a cutoff for. It's something that, you know, that was one of the reasons why they started doing it then. Because I think some people are like, oh, you know, yeah. they keep 2000. They're like, oh, that's already done and over. I'm like, yeah, but we're still is Earth okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, you know the whole thing with the with the two thousand something did shift in two thousand and twelve, no doubt about right. it. Things sped up, but you know the few doomsayers who were like, "It's the end of the world as we know it." Um, you know, they, they they seem to get the louder voice, but there was a whole bunch of other of us spiritual people and people tuned in who were saying, no, you know, I, I got the download, did you? <laughs> you know? Right. I feel like 2012 was just the start of this work. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems like, it, it, it seems like yeah. so many more people are doing this type of thing, um, and it's just growing and growing, and more more people are like, what are you doing? I want to do that, because they see the shift in you. Like, from mm. just from when I did the Moon key with you, I mean, to now, there's t- they, like everybody's like, oh my god, you know, they see a huge shift in how I am, and you know, Jamie, my fiance, is kind of like, what the hell? Like, he thinks that I'm gonna like, like, he's like, we're going to the Pepper Palace, you're leaving. I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm just, I'm doing something different than I've ever done for the past eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't get really like pissed off anymore, like with stupid things. I. Things kind of just bounce off of me. Um, you know, more abundance mm-hmm. is coming in. It's just you do bring in, like, more peace into your life and a new perspective on things. When you're looking at a situation, you know, people come to you and they're like, blah, 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 and you, you can look at it from an outside or, you know, have them look mm-hmm. at it from the other person's point of view. Even, um, like, I've found with myself and my other friend, she's like, I could not stand being around spiders. And now she's like, you know, assisting them out of the bathtub so they don't get killed. <laughs> and that's the Aww. thing. It's like becoming, you know, loving all of creation from a little tiny thing of sand all the way to the biggest part of the universe and everything in between there. It's all yeah. sacred and you don't, you know, just because it's a spider, you don't need to kill it. And I've actually gotten exactly. a lot better with that. Like, I don't kill them anymore. I like... I used to be like, ah, and freeze, and I like, them out. get up from the room and run I across the room. Out now. <laughs> you know, like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. And they're so tiny. It's like, what is wrong with you? Know. We're not afraid of a hummingbird. A hummingbird's a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and could, you know, could, like, you know, peck at you. But um, the other thing I, I really think is important with the, um, the monarchy is that it's self, it, it's almost like it's self-taught. You right. receive a download. The download, basically, the Mona Key is passed forehead to forehead, or let's say third eye to third eye. All yeah. the stuff is an energetic, immediate transmission. I do believe that, and um, that's what they say. Um, but, you know, all the other stuff of putting your hands here, doing that, I, I think that's that helps, but I think the transmission of the right is instant, honestly. Yeah. I've noticed it's that more, that's people before the they come to get the right, they're already or, experiencing. Yeah. Sorry. No, yes, yeah, absolutely. They're already like getting activated because it, it just it's an energetic thing. So it happens almost instantaneously. Yeah. And, and um and then you get you get your own like downloads basically and you start to understand where they're coming from you're you know you're you're they are healing for people too so to to for people that may be interested in getting the right you know you may have some reactions to them too it can bring up stuff some people get sick 
Some people get, like, let's say, ungrounded or, you know, if their issues come up, if it's clearing out pain, pain that you haven't faced yet, well, you will face it then. (laughs) Right, And, and that brings up a good point because, I do the first two rites together. I do the the, um, the healer's rite and the dance of power because I've noticed when we do the healer's rite, you know, you're activating the healing ability in your hands, but you're also opening up your heart and you're bringing up stuff from the past, from your ancestors, from, you know, thousands of years ago that needs to be healed. And it may not even, mm-hmm. like, make any sense to you what comes up, but, you know, it can be emotional. It can be, you know, can kind of hurt at first, and and it's good because it's coming up to be healed. It's no longer to be stored in your DNA. You're getting rid of that stuff. But with the bands of power, I like to give it as like a tool because when that stuff comes up, you know, you have you have five different spots in your body now that you can kind of like hold on to. So like, say you get um, say you get angry, take the fire and burn it away. Because, you know, it's a, yeah. people don't know, it's five different elements. We put bands around your luminous energy field and all relate to a different element. So you can take things and they transmute it into fertilizer for Pachimama or they turn it into water and wash away, whatever it is. But right. giving somebody a tool to use when that stuff starts coming up is big for them. I had a um, group last night and each one of them at the end had felt something different and they're like, why do I feel like this? And it's like, it's not even, it may not even be your stuff that you're feeling. It may be something from an ancestor. It may be something from your past that you can't put your finger on right now, but take it and mm-hmm. send it to be transmuted. And they were like, oh my God, thank you so much. I needed to hear that so I know what to do with this. And that they're not exactly. crazy for feeling what they felt. You know, because everyone's like, well, oh, that's great, that's great. And they're like, well, what do I feel like funny. this? Yes, why do I feel like this? And then it's like, oh, you ancestors. <laughs> right? Like, you must have had somebody yeah. up in there that's, like, all pissed off and <laughs> exactly. ready to fight. And it's just, you know sometimes, too, when you're hurt by something, and yet you really, it wouldn't, you wouldn't usually be hurt by it. It's usually, or it wouldn't usually trigger you. A lot of times that can be ancestral stuff that's coming up. It's right. like a memory. It's like an echo coming in from your ancestor and they're like, oh, you know, it's almost like their gene or their energy or whatever you got from them, that memory is passed on and you're remembering it and maybe even yeah. remembering the shame or the guilt or the anger that you just feel like, why am I, what, this, is, this isn't me. Always when I feel like a, a, a strong emotion like that, I usually try to go through and say, okay, is it me? Or, you know, is it ancestral or is it someone else or is it just random, you know? process of right. yeah it can it's and it's weird to see you know and to in the beginning to figure that stuff out like oh my god what is this um but it's and it's good and i've noticed with the harmony right because the harmony right comes after it kind of brings them back down and like you know it, it kind of settles that stuff out for them you know what Some i mean like they start to become more with more the harmony right though because it's maybe they have problems with their power because it is about power the harmony, right? I think in a way. Right, you know, but like once they've got it, the they they fight. seem to not have as much shit going on, like with their like upset and stuff. Mm. Mm-hmm. But, you know what? I, I like with myself too. When I got the harmony right, I felt you know more, more grounded and more like, I guess within power. You know, you have more power. Yes, you you step into your power more, uh, and. We we talked about this on another show too. The archetypes, I mean, they're just great because they, the animals, the power animals, are basically like another tool. They're they're a helper. They're an ally. So they go get the information and bring it back to us. We just interpret it or receive the message. Right. Uh, I actually use um, and I tell people too because when you know when you're doing Reiki or Shambhala or whatever type of energy work that you mm-hmm. do you can connect with these archetypes and bring them in to, to help heal and balance the different chakras and stuff. Like, you know, I, I'll, I'll call on Pachimama to help ground people. Um, you know, I'll call on um, the serpent at the root, the jaguar at the, at the sacral. It just, and it depends. I mean, not for every person. If, if, and sometimes not right. at all. But if someone has a lot yeah. of crap going on in one of the areas, I'll call on the archetype to come in and assist 
And they know what to do, the archetypes. Like, you know, that's the thing that people don't realize, that, you know, the animal, whatever the animal does, it does it the best. <laughs> you know, that animal is you know, almost like, you know, like with cats, it's intuition and stuff like that. And then, you know, dogs, loyalty, friendship, you know, if you're looking at power animals. So when you call that animal in, they're, they're, they're perfect for that job, whatever it is that you want to do to call them in for. Right. You know, they know exactly what to do. You don't have to kind of like go, or think about it almost. They'll do it for you. Yes, yes. And, and uh, I, I with the day think, keepers and stuff. Hmm. So a lot of people really love the earth keeper, right, I find. Sorry, my dog got out of the frigging yard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little distracted. My mom, I had my mom watching them, and she's like, "Honey, buddy, go out." I'm like, "Ah." Okay, wiener. <laughs> little wiener. No, stay, 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 stay. Um, now the other one. So <laughs> we said it was Munaki and star seeds. I just find that star seeds um, really respond well to it. I had an event on Facebook, and um, it, actually, a lot of star seeds went into it and I, I just think though you know some people not everyone connects with it and that's fine I think it's a good way to like do the first two rights and see if you like it see how you adjust to it and then yeah. continue on if you want but uh, star seeds it's like this is maybe an activation that is waiting for them because it will activate their own process that like you know has nothing to do with monarchy it just activates the DNA or clears out their energy fields so they can hear the message. Because a lot of times people are getting the messages, but they just can't hear it because there's so much other stuff going on. Right, yeah. And I think um, some people, like they say, it's like you'll get, you'll get called to do it. Um, you may just start doing it at one point. You may not be ready to do it, but um, I think that you'll know if it connects and resonates. And I think a lot of times, too, people kind of get, like, they get maybe discouraged because they don't know at first. But as they start going through it, it gets more obvious, and you get more and more connection. So some people really take to it right away, and some people are just like, I don't know, you know. Yeah, it, it takes them a little longer to kind of, like, you know, understand. And and then, like, yeah, just to really encourage people that do get the rights to do the meditation. Now, you know the meditation is the 14 weeks. You know, that's a guideline. If you've been doing a lot of work, you've probably already done a lot of work on yourself. But I think people that really haven't done a lot of work, they really need to do the 14 weeks. You right. Know, and but, I tell people uh, that they'll know when you're, like I'll say, you know when you're good with a um, starting exactly. out to say. But, and that's I tell people happen. too, like, don't go on and just start passing on rights until um, until you're comfortable. Like, they say you can start passing them on as soon as you've got the first two. And mm. then um, after you do the 14 weeks of meditations. But, like, I wasn't comfortable enough to start passing them on until, like, you know, I had all of them and I got time to kind of practice. And I practiced with people before mm. I ever started an official class like last night was the first night of my actual actual class the other time that I was doing rights or either been one-on-one or with Mm. friends for like you know I'd gift them or trade for them right right sorry I'm all out of breath Uh, how was your class how was your class by the way oh it was great um I had there were seven people who were going to come but some of them have already gone through the rights. They were just coming to kind of like watch and get a re, uh, mm. better mm. idea on how to transmit them. Um, but I have four new ones who are there getting getting the rights for the first yeah, time. That's fantastic. And they really, you know, it was a really good class. It was like the perfect people were there together because they really connected and were able to share with each other. Mhm. Yeah, and I, there is. Um, we're we're gonna. We have like about ninety seconds left, so. Um, we are going to continue on over on Google Hangouts on the Blu-ray Ascension Seed show when this ends. Um, I don't know 
uh, for part one, I, should, do we end? I guess we should properly properly end this one, though. Okay, so, we so just, um, should we just put the link in the in the comments and have them continue on over? Yeah, I I think so. I think I don't know if I can have how to do that. It, do I do it in the chat or how do I do it in the comment or is it afterwards? Uh, uh I don't we'll know. Maybe the episode. Is the... Okay. So you can connect with me at www.leahealingservices.com and Starseed Shaman on Facebook and Bridget. Uh, I'm at BeCreativelyYou.com or you can find me at Bridget Rao on Facebook, um, Divine Essential, New Paradigm Healing page, and um, that's about it. <laughs> yep, yeah, and we have um, the Blu-ray Ascension on um page on Facebook, Google Plus and a YouTube channel and of course on Blog Talk Radio. And thank you everybody. Thank you. Okay, are you so there it's done. <laughs>